So the flat river band contacted me and their Prevo wasn't doing about 45 miles an hour on the interstate. And normally that's a sign of low transmission fluid. So I had them check the trans fluid and the Allison trans and it was full, well, it was a little bit low. They added like a half gallon to it, but that wouldn't have been enough to do that. Um, so they went ahead and limped it on in and um, they don't have a working turbo boost gauge. Uh, it's definitely down on boost, it's down on power. So we're gonna go through the things that we normally check for low boost. Uh, turbo exhaust leaks is one of them. You don't see a lot of black smoke typically on a D-deck because if the boost isn't there, the computer doesn't know to, it won't let it add more fuel. So you're not overfueling like a mechanical engine where you'd see a lot of black smoke. So we're gonna check that. We'll check fuel filters. Uh, we'll check air filter. Uh, it's kind of the common stuff. And then we'll check the turbo. Well, our, our hill is always a good test as you're gonna watch it come up the hill here. Uh, it is down on power. It does climb the hill, thank goodness, but it's, it's not a speed demon. Watch when this thing starts, you're gonna see a little puff of smoke down here, which means that there is an exhaust man or a leak there at the, the up pipe on the turbo on the right hand side. Yeah. Keep it cut hard like that. I just don't know with the low on turbo boost if you're gonna make that turn. Now you got it. It's kind of steep the way the rear end's at and this, this low on boost, this bus is not going to move. He's gonna floor it here and you're gonna see it barely crawl. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be black. <laughs> Definitely time. I did notice a pretty good oil leak coming from the turbo, so we're gonna go ahead and fix that while we're looking at it. You can see the soot clearly on these clamps, so these connections are definitely leaking and that's gonna make it be low on boost too. Try jiggling that around. Can you move it? Is it hot? Okay. The soot tells the story. We'll just be able to clean these up real good, put them back on, and then they gotta be retightened every once in a while because the heat, uh, heat cycles on it kind of make them loose. And we'll clean, this one's on the manifold, it's a little rusty, so we'll clean that up with some Scotch-Brite and it should be able to seal up good. But you can see where the soot and what was leaking. This is why that turbo was leaking at the bottom on the drain. It's because there's supposed to be a square cut O-ring in there and it's just completely compressed where there's no elasticity left to it. So it was just leaking. I carry these little O-rings in stock. Again, they're square cut O-rings are made for high temperature. They're, they're for that turbo. And as you can see here on this one, um, I'll compare it to a new one, the old one that we just took out plus a new one, how, how much thinner the old one is now. It's just, it's been compressed over time. There we go, that's a good shot of it. Uh, it's so much thinner. There's just no way for that to seal good. Big difference. 
And here's the new one in place. You can see how it stands proud. And again, the other one was totally flush. And we're just gonna check the air filter real quick too, because that's another thing that can cause that. Black as I thought it was gonna be. Let's go grab a blowgun and blow it out. Very well. It's like a giant maraca or a rain stick thing that they use like in Australia, wherever those things are called. We ordered a new one, but it won't be here till tomorrow. So we're just gonna blow this one out real quick and then take it for a test drive. Everybody is. Charge on this road. This thing needs the brakes adjusted. shifts I'm assuming yeah I'm gonna shift so from 13 go back to 12 and then hop back up to 13 and pick up more so 
So he had no idea what his uh, turbo boost level was because this gauge does not work. It's not hooked up. There's nothing in the back. This is a mechanical gauge. Now his D-deck reads the uh, boost and a separate boost sensor. And that's, you know, that we can plug our uh, ProLink into it and, and scan that. But they make a device called the scan gauge. So instead of us trying to fix this gauge and run a, an airline all the way from the turbo back to here, um, and he's got another another gauge up here that doesn't work. I don't know which one it is. But uh, anything that the DDAC reads, we can read with the scan gauge D. So the scan, I think the D stands for diesel, scan gauge diesel. You can get this at like Camping World. It's like $159. Super cheap. Um, and this will plug into the DDAC and it'll give you like four different things that you can monitor. And one of them could be turbo boost, you know, like fuel economy, different things like that, oil pressure, uh, coolant temperature, that kind of stuff. And you can just, you know, mount it kind of like he's got that satellite thing there. You can put it up on the dash or that bus we just went on the other day. The guy had it mounted up there. We've installed these for a few customers of ours. The only problem is, is when you buy it, it comes with this adapter here. And that's not what you need to go into the old D-Deck, which the plug needs to look like this, which is an old OBD-1 GM style. Um, but if you send a picture of where it plugs in at to scan gauge, um, if you call them and then send a picture to them, they'll send you the right adapter for it. And they actually didn't even charge us for it. We, we've done three of them so far and they just send it out for us. Um, so that's nice. So the same readings that the ProLink will get for as far as the gauges and stuff like that, you can have the display on this thing show up here for $159. Um, and then you just got to run a small cable. So the end of the cable, you'll have to drill a hole big enough for like a phone cord or computer cord type thing to go through it. So the, because unfortunately the DDAC computer port is below the driver's feet here. So we will have to drill a hole in order to get this, but there's plenty of, it comes with plenty of, of wiring to reach wherever you want it to reach. Uh, and we'll do that. So scan gauge D, I highly recommend it. It's like 159 bucks, uh, but you got to get the right adapter for it. But again, this company will send it to you at no charge. Uh, you can probably find them online too, if you want to buy them. I don't know how long they're going to do them for free, but um, this is a great way to make your turbo boost gauge work. And uh, if you have any other gauges that don't work, or just make it easier to monitor things digitally versus an analog gauge where you can't quite tell. So like uh, water temperature gauge, it might be kind of hard to tell if you were, you know, 200 versus, or I'll say you're 198 versus 205. It'd be really hard to tell on that gauge, but the digital readout right on the money would tell you, so. So there's a the new air filter. I'll get that one put in, but it's definitely uh, a lot different looking than the old one that we just tried to blow out. So this is the tag tire and you can see it's all scrubbed off, but there's really no tread depth left. <laughs> Zero on the tread meter. So this needs to be replaced ASAP. It gets worse as we go. So we went ahead and took it on a test drive. It's got plenty of boost now. Feels good power wise. Uh, one thing is brakes. I, we're not very good at all. So we pr pulled it on the pit here and uh, adjusted his brakes up good for him. So it's been a while. They do a lot of traveling down to Texas with the band and stuff in this bus. So it's had quite a few miles on it since the brakes got adjusted.